Friday practice in Barcelona is over and the fastest driver of the day was Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes as Mercedes are continuing to improve from what we saw in Montreal. So what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I am going to be doing a data analysis from practice. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top five teams later on, which is Aston Martin, Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari, and Red Bull, so stick around for that. Yes, Friday is over, and Mercedes with Lewis Hamilton was the fastest driver of the day. We do usually see the Mercedes being fast on Friday, but it does look like, at least over one lap, they may have found some actual performance. The question is though, how did that fastest lap from FP2 compare to FP1? Well, let's look at the fastest lap set by Lando Norris in FP1 and compare it to the fastest lap from FP2, which of course was set by Lewis Hamilton, to see where the differences are. And when you look at these two laps, the speed down the straights are actually very similar, which is not something we tend to see, showing that there is not that much difference between the power units. However, when it comes to all of the braking zones, you can pretty much see that Lando Norris in FP1 has to brake a lot earlier and harder than Lewis Hamilton due to not having the car in the sweet spot and the grip of the circuit being lower due to less running. Then heading towards turn 9, it looks like Lando Norris in FP1 made a mistake and couldn't carry anywhere near the same amount of speed as was possible in FP2 when the grip levels were higher. Hamilton was pretty much flat out compared to Norris who had to have a big lift. Then finally heading through the final corner when the tyres are absolutely screaming, Norris scrubs off more speed, which you would expect with having less grip. All of this leads to a lap time difference of one second between the two sessions. So we have seen how the times compare between the two sessions, but let's now look at the top speeds that each team was able to reach in practice to see what we can learn and we can see who's looking slow in a straight line and who's looking pretty fast. Well, when it comes to straight line performance, at the top, it is not much of a surprise to see Red Bull and Haas at the top of the pile. VCarb are also looking improved in a straight line, with the large number of changes they have made to their car this weekend, potentially leading to a less draggy car overall. However, the slowest car in a straight line, which was a massive surprise, was Williams, as they are almost 9 kilometers per hour down on the fastest speed in a straight line. I have a feeling that they may have had things turned down more than anyone else, which could explain why Williams were four tenths away from the next fastest car. Either that, or they've got the setup completely wrong so far this weekend. So, we've seen the top speeds, but let's now talk about the midfield, and what teams are looking good. Well, it has to be said that one team in the midfield that has had a fantastic day is Alpine. With the news of Flavio Briatore returning to the team, they delivered on a Friday as Pierre Gasly was 4th fastest and Esteban Ocon was ninth fastest, which for the team is a massive improvement from what we have seen at previous races, as they look to finally be getting on top of their car and getting their season underway. For Pierre Gasly, this was a fantastic day, and he was only 0.179 off of the fastest lap set by Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top five teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, today was a difficult day as Fernando Alonso was down in 14th place and teammate Lance Stroll was all the way down in 18th place and Aston Martins continue to fall down the order and it seems to just keep going on. The pace is struggling, not just with one lap pace, but also the race pace right now. And I worry that they are going to be struggling with the tyre wear when it comes to the Grand Prix. As their race stints, it looked like they were falling off quicker than who should be their rivals. Showing that they are currently being quite hard on their tyres. For Mercedes, it looks like it was a turnaround in form from Montreal and it looks like that is continuing into Barcelona as the fastest driver of the day was one of their own with Lewis Hamilton. However, we have seen this on a number of occasions that Mercedes flatter to deceive with solid Friday pace. The question marks start to arrive when it comes to the longer runs. Well, let's compare the times of Lewis Hamilton to Lando Norris in the McLaren and Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. To show this, I've brought up all of the lap times from practice. And when you look at these, you can see that from the long runs, it looks like Mercedes might have had the pace over one lap, 
but they are just a little bit down when it comes to the longer runs. However, they are definitely closer than they have been, and this should give Mercedes fans a reason to be excited. I will be comparing Hamilton's lap to that of Norris and Verstappen when I talk about their respective teams later on, so let's do that. For McLaren, today was a solid day. In race trim, they are ahead of Mercedes a little bit, and over one lap, Lando Norris was within one-tenth of the fastest time of the day. The circuit is one that suits their car very nicely, as they do enjoy high-speed downforce that this circuit has, and that this circuit requires. Let's now compare the laps of Lando Norris from FP2 this time to Lewis Hamilton. We saw the FP1 versus FP2 earlier, but this time we're looking at the FP2 lap times from the same session. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that initially down the straight, Norris is faster, but it looks like he backs off a full throttle a little bit sooner, and then heading into turn four here, you can see Hamilton is much later on the brakes, and this is where he actually makes up most of the time. From then though, through the twisty section, Norris in the McLaren actually starts to claw back the time and come back towards Lewis Hamilton. And then on the exit of turn 9 into turn 10, you can see Norris is actually faster down the straight heading into the hairpin. But going through those final couple of corners, he doesn't carry the same amount of speed as Lewis. Looking at this lap overall, the McLaren is definitely faster than the Mercedes, but Lando was just a little bit less committed compared to Lewis Hamilton. Going into tomorrow, I think McLaren are going to be very confident that they can have a strong day and potentially put one of their cars on the front row and maybe even pole position. For Ferrari, it was a solid day for hometown hero Carlos Sainz, as he was even closer to Lewis Hamilton than Lando Norris was. But teammate Charles Leclerc looked to be struggling a little bit more over one lap and struggling a little bit more in general. Leclerc had an interrupted day and he didn't get much done when it came to the long runs, which is what you can see here when you look at all the lap times set by both drivers. You can see that Leclerc is seemingly on the back foot here. So let's now compare the fastest laps of both drivers. As usual with both of these drivers, for a while there is absolutely nothing to tell between them. The first half is very comparable. But the main area where Leclerc starts to fall back versus Carlos Sainz is at the turn 10 hairpin. Sainz is able to carry more speed and then going through 11 and 12 you can see that once again Sainz is able to carry more speed. And that is also the case through the final couple of corners. Suggesting to me that maybe Leclerc's tyres were dropping off as the lap went on whereas Sainz was able to keep them alive for a little bit longer. Through these sections, Charles Leclerc lost around two tenths of a second, and this is where Leclerc went from possibly finishing in the top five to being the sixth fastest driver. For Ferrari, they've got work to do with Charles Leclerc. Carlos Sainz is looking good, but his race pace doesn't seem to be as strong as the McLarens or the Red Bulls. So right now, it looks like Ferrari could be the third fastest team, and they could be in a fight with Mercedes. And finally, for Red Bull, today was not actually a great day. Verstappen was decent as per usual, but teammate Sergio Perez once again is finding himself a long way down the order as he was only 13th. And let's not forget, he does have a grid drop coming into this race, so he cannot afford another difficult weekend. And, well, right now, it looks like he might just be having another difficult weekend, which is not good enough for the Mexican driver or Red Bull as a whole. Let's now compare the times of Verstappen to Lewis Hamilton. Going down the main straight, you can see that Verstappen is a lot faster than Lewis Hamilton, showing just how much less drag the Red Bull has compared to Mercedes. There is an 8 km per hour difference between the two drivers. At this point, obviously, it's all looking good for Red Bull, but then heading into Turn 4 and Turn 5, Hamilton carries more minimum apex speed and gains back all of the time that he lost. The Mercedes is looking strong in the slower speed corners compared to Red Bull, which goes a long way to say that McLaren's looking very, very strong in those slow speed corners as they were faster than Mercedes. And, well, it looks like Red Bull is once again struggling in those slower speed corners, which is something we are starting to become more used to. Even so though, I still expect Red Bull to have a little bit more in the locker, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Verstappen ahead of the Mercedes cars in qualifying, and probably on the front row, and who knows, even pole position. So with that in mind then, 
What are my predictions for qualifying for the Spanish Grand Prix? Well, in fifth place, I am going to go for Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. P4 will be Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes. P3 will be Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. P2 will be Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. And I think Lando Norris should secure pole position in the McLaren. But that is what I think. The question is though, what do you guys think will happen in qualifying? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.